Hello and welcome back to an Empower Service tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be going over the server.properties properties file on Java. I'm going to be explaining what mostly all of the options do. Now, we won't be doing this for Bedrock because Bedrock nicely explains everything in their server.properties properties file, unlike Java. So the first thing we need to do to actually get to our server.properties properties is go to empowerservice.com, head to new control panel in the top right, press manage on your server, and then management and file management. If you don't have a server.properties file like I do, you need to install a version of Minecraft. All versions of Minecraft come with server.properties files from vanilla, Spigot, Paper Spigot. I'm running Paper Spigot 1.16.4, but you can run any version that you'd like. They all come with server.properties. So I'm gonna open server.properties and we're gonna start from spawn protection. Now spawn protection is a little confusing. When it's set to 16, that means there is a 33 by 33 by 33 square around spawn that is protected. Unless you're an op on the server, you can't destroy anything in this area. Now the way this works is a little math equation. So it's 2x plus 1, x being whatever you enter in here. So if I was to put in 4 here, then we get 2 times 4, which is 8 plus one, which is nine. So you'd have a nine by nine area in spawn that is protected. If you don't want anything protected, just press zero and then nothing's protected. The max tick time is the maximum number of milliseconds a single tick may take before the server crashes. So 60,000 milliseconds is 60 seconds. So if one server tick takes 60 seconds to compute, the system assumes the server has crashed and will shut it down. The query port is automatically set. You don't have to touch it. If your IP changes, then you just want to delete the query port and press save. And then when your server is restarted, the query port fills in automatically for you. The generator settings are very confusing. So if you want to use these yourself, I suggest you look these up yourself. I really can't go over it in a video. It'll take way too long. Sync chunk writing enables synchronous chunk writes. There's nothing really much about that. You should leave it on true. It helps your server run a bit more smoothly. Force game mode basically means, for example, if I went into creative game mode, disconnected from the server, and then joined back when it was on false, I'd still be in creative. But if it was on true and I was in creative, I disconnected and joined back, you'd be set to the default game mode, which is actually stated under this setting a little bit, and it's here, survival. This obviously can be creative. It could also be spectator. Allow nether is pretty simple. If it's set to true, the nether is enabled. If it's set to false, it isn't. Nether portals will still work. However, if you try to go inside of them when it's set to false, you won't go anywhere. Enforced whitelist is a little confusing. It basically means when it's set to true, online users that are not on the whitelist are automatically kicked. So to do this, you'd have to reload the whitelist file and they'd automatically be kicked. If you remove someone from a whitelist while they're on the server, they won't be kicked. So if you have this option turned on, they will automatically be kicked. It's not really that big of a deal. If you want someone off your server, you can just use the ban command that all Minecraft servers come with. Broadcast console to ops basically means any console commands that are run through the console will be broadcasted to the ops in their chat. Don't worry about enable query. It's a bit difficult to explain. Just leave it on true. Player idle timeout is very simple. If a player goes AFK for let's say five minutes, they'll be kicked after five minutes. You can set this to 10, and if they're AFK for 10 minutes, they'll be kicked. Text filtering config is pretty unimportant. Don't worry about it. We're gonna move on to difficulty. This is the difficulty of your server, and there's four options, just like in Minecraft. You've got peaceful, easy, normal, and hard. Or these can be replaced by numbers from zero to three, zero being peaceful, one being easy, two being normal, and three being hardcore. Spawn monsters, self-explanatory. Broadcast Archon to Ops. Well, the Archon is something completely different. It's a remote console. Many of you probably won't have it set up, but I'd leave it on true. It basically does the same thing as broadcast console to Ops. The Ops permission level goes as follows. One means they can bypass spawn protections. Two means the ops can use all single player cheat commands. Three 
means that ops can use most multiplayer exclusive commands such as ban and op other players. And four means that ops can sort of control the server, so slash stop, save all, and they get every other command as well. I'd leave it at four unless you don't trust who you're making operative on your server. PvP is equal to true, very simple. True means P you can hit people, false means you can't. NT broadcast range controls how close NTs need to be until they are rendered in by the client. This is a number from 0 to 500, and if it's 500, you can see NTs from far away, and if it's 100, you have to be a little bit closer, and if it's 0, you can't see NTs at all. Don't worry about snooper, it's something that Minecraft has set up themselves, you can just leave it on true. Level type determines what type of map is generated. This is automatically set at default which is the normal map. Then you've got flat, which is a super flat world. You've got large biomes spelt like this, which would make your biomes larger. And it's basically a normal world other than that. You've got the amplified worlds, which basically have uh, cr some crazy terrain. Hardcore determines whether if you die, you have to restart your world. It's basically normal hardcore Minecraft. Enable status makes the server appear as online in the server list. If it's set to false, it means that the server will appear offline in the status page of Minecraft in the multiplayer connection page, but you can still connect to it. Enable command block, very simple. If it's set to true, you can use command blocks on your server. If it's set to false, you can't. Max players, you can just change how many players can join here. You can set this as whatever you want. However, your server would probably crash if you let 10,000 people join. So just leave it as whatever you like. Don't worry about the network compression threshold. If you want to search into that, you can. Again, also don't worry about the resource pack SHA1. If you want a resource pack on your server, then you'll need to mess with this option. Other than that, you won't. The max world size sets the maximum possible size in blocks expressed as a radius. So if I were to set this option to 1000, you'd have a world of maximum 2000 by 2000 but as default is set to this number which is basically as much as you'll need function permission levels works in hand in hand with the op mission level and it just sets the default permission level for functions so this is set to two which means for to use functions on the minecraft server ops would need to have permission level two which they should do by default archon port is for setting up archon don't worry about that either Server port is automatically generated by us when you start your server, so leave that on its own. Debug is a developer command. You don't really want it on unless you'll know what you're doing. Leave the server IP as 0.0.0.0. Spawn NPCs, whether it spawns villagers or not. Allow flight, whether the server allows you to fly or not. This doesn't mean with an Elytra, this means like with a hacked client, let's say. When set to false, it will kick people for flying. And when set to true, it won't. The level name, also simple, it's default set world. Now, if you wanted to upload a custom world, to actually load in the world to your server, you'd have to change the level name. So for example, if I wanted a world on my server named Empower, then I'd have to change the level name. Now the server will always choose to use the world named Empower and set the default world, which is named World. The view distance is also a reasonably important option. A high view distance will make the server lag quite a lot when players are running around. 10 is recommended as it reduces lag, however you can pull this all the way down to 3 or all the way up to 32 if you want your server to crash. The resource pack is if you want a resource pack in your server, don't worry about that. Spawn animals, decides whether your animals are spawned or not, these are cows, these are pigs, stuff like that. The whitelist can be set to true or false, just means that if the whitelist is on or not. However, you can do this via console commands, so don't worry about this. Those console commands are whitelist on or whitelist off. The Archon password is to do with the Archon again, the remote console, don't worry about that. Generate structures defines whether your world generates structures such as temples or villages. You want this set to true in most cases. The max build height changes the build height of your server. This number has to be a multiple of eight if you wanna set it higher. When online mode is set to true, the server checks connecting players against Minecraft account databases. If you have paid for your account, you don't need to worry about this option as it is set to true. However, if you want to run a cracked version of Minecraft, maybe a cracked account, you need to set this version to false, otherwise you won't be able to join. Level seed, pretty simple, 
You can paste the level seed in here. You can delete your current world and then restart your server. And the new world that's generated will use the seed that's in this box. Use native transport, leave that as on. That's a server side option. Prevent proxy connections will prevent people from connecting on proxy connections. If a player is getting kicked for this, leave it as false. However, if you want your server to be super secure, for example, people can't join with VPNs, you can set this to true. Enable JMX monitoring, leave this as false. Enable Archon is another Archon feature. Remote console, you can leave this as false. The rate limit sets the maximum amount of packets a user can send before getting kicked. So if someone's trying to lag out your server in game, you can set this to let's say 100 and they'll get kicked. This can be an integer of any value. However, saying this to zero disables your, this feature. If you've got trustworthy players on your server, you know aren't doing anything sketchy, don't worry about this, leave it as zero. And finally, the MOTD is what appears on the Minecraft multiplayer page. So if I were to set this to empower servers, when I added my Minecraft server to my multiplayer tab, I would see empower servers under the name of the server. And that is all the server.properties commands. Thank you very much for watching. If you require any more support, the fastest way to reach us will be via live chat, located in the bottom right corner of your screen at all times. Thank you for choosing Empower Servers.